Taking the dog for a walk. From a bird's eye view, it seems like a nice enough everyday occurrence, except that these two were on a hillside overlooking the capital of Chile, and they're working. According to the AFP news agency, this is a country where recycling is far less common than it is in other parts of South America. So a lawyer named Gonzalo Chiang, along with his dog Sam, are doing something called plogging picking up mostly plastic garbage as they blaze the trail. And while Sam's not doing the lifting, he is doing the carrying and helping his best friend encourage others to clean up their local environment. They're also staying in shape. Chung says last year while plogging, he collected an average of 1,000 bottles a month. That's 12,000 pieces of garbage last year thanks to a guy taking the dog for a walk. From Chile to Sudan, we're hopping the Atlantic for our next report on the world from A to Z. I'm Carl Azus. Thanks for flying with us. Sudan is a country in northeastern Africa, on the western shore of the Red Sea. It's struggled for decades under wars and conflicts. The latest one started almost a year ago and involves two rival military generals. On one side is the government and its armed forces. It's been accused in the past of trying to force Islam on other parts of the country. On the other side is a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF. It says it's fighting for democracy, but it's been accused of forcing civilians to join its ranks. The power struggle between them has trapped civilians in the crossfire, with several million having fled their homes, but many have nowhere to go. The CIA estimates there are more than 49 million people in Sudan, and that close to half of them live below the poverty line. Some, according to correspondent Nim El Bahr, are left with no choice but to join the RSF. You'll see a warning of graphic video over her report, but we've taken steps to minimize the disturbing footage. Propaganda video from the paramilitary rapid support forces, the RSF. For much of the last year, they have slashed and burned their way through the country. This video shows them triumphant and entrenched in the very heart of Sudan, Al Jazeera state. And they are recruiting local men in the hundreds. But it's impossible to tell who here is a willing soldier and who has been forcibly conscripted. Eyewitnesses have told CNN that RSF soldiers are giving civilians an ultimatum. Enlist or starve. Our investigation shows how almost 700 men and 65 children have been forcibly recruited to swell RSF ranks. And that's just what we've been able to verify in Jazeera. Across Sudan, reports and images like this one are emerging. Children in RSF uniform. As across Sudan, millions forced from their homes by violence now face famine. CNN spoke to three dozen eyewitnesses, survivors, and the families of victims. The RSF, they say, is weaponizing hunger, denying food to those who won't join. Aid groups say almost four million children in Sudan are already malnourished as the country faces mass starvation. If aid agencies can't get food to those in need, almost a quarter of a million children could die. Jazeera is Sudan's breadbasket, its heartland. To control this part of Sudan is to exert control over who lives and who dies. The RSF deny they are responsible for the hunger gripping the country, yet they control every aspect of farming this land. They control the warehouses of food and aid meant to support the most vulnerable. They control the seed supplies, fertilizer, pesticides, agricultural machinery and irrigation channels. The RSF sit in the heart of Sudan, hoarding food meant for millions. From here they can wait out, starve out Sudan's people and its army. Fear, uncertainty, despair cascade as the months of war drag on. On this date in world history. One of the world's most infamous prisons closed its door on this date in 1963. 
Alcatraz was located on a 22-acre island about a mile off the coast of San Francisco. It held some of America's most dangerous criminals, including Al Capone, and was almost impossible to escape from. The prison's now a museum. America's first boycott of an Olympic Games was declared on this date in 1980. President Jimmy Carter said U.S. athletes would not be heading to the Summer Games in Moscow after the Soviet Union failed to remove its troops from Afghanistan. The Soviet Union retaliated by pulling its athletes from the 1984 Summer Games in Los Angeles. And the world's very first tweet was sent out on this date in 2006. Co-founder Jack Dorsey sent the world a message saying, just setting up my Twitter. It sparked an internet revolution, with some estimates saying the number of tweets since then have been over a trillion and counting. World of knowledge. The registered symbol is most closely associated with what kind of intellectual property? Copyright, trademark, patent, trade secret. This symbol represents a registered trademark, one that's officially protected by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Barbie pink, Coca-Cola red, Tiffany blue, UPS brown. When you think of those brands, you immediately picture their signature colors. And that's not coincidental. It's because they've trademarked them. Now don't confuse trademarks with patents or copyrights. A patent is for inventions, like the light bulb or salad shooter. A copyright protects intellectual or creative work, like books and music. A trademark applies to logos and slogans and sometimes colors. The first color to ever be trademarked was a shade of pink, claimed by an insulation company, believe it or not. In the 1950s, Owens Corning wanted to stand out from its competition, so the company dyed its fiberglass insulation pink. It used the funky color in marketing campaigns, even making the Pink Panther its mascot. In 1987, after a five-year legal battle, Owens Corning became the first to trademark a color, and soon other businesses followed suit, and filed suit. Companies have battled each other in court over trademarked colors, like T-Mobile. Its bright pink is Pantone Rhodamine Red U, also called Magenta. In 2014, the company sued its rival AT&T for using a shade of plum that it claimed was too close to its trademarked color. T-Mobile won, and AT&T had to stop using the color. In 2019, T-Mobile sent a letter to the insurance company Lemonade demanding it stop using the color pink in its branding. Lemonade responded with a hashtag free the pink campaign. The company won the right to use pink in France and the United States, but in Germany, where T-Mobile's parent company is based, a court issued an injunction, so Lemonade had to stop using pink and switch to red. To trademark a color, a company must prove that the color distinguishes them from their competitors, but the color itself can't serve a functional purpose. General Mills cereal has tried and failed to trademark the color yellow because too many other cereal brands use it. Here's another trivia question. Who is the only U.S. president from the state of Pennsylvania? We bet our viewers in Mr. McGinnis' class know it. They're watching from Wallenpawpack Area High School in Hawley, Pennsylvania, the home state of James Buchanan. The only president born in Illinois was Ronald Reagan, though several other American leaders lived there. Miss Tejada's students attend class in Gurney at Viking Middle School. Jay Leno is known for having a, you know, reasonably acceptable car collection of around 180 vehicles, but this dude in Canada has more than 25,000, and man, are they some Hot Wheels. I mean, they're Hot Wheels. Maybe a little less valuable than Leno's daily drivers, but while there's not a record number of them here, the owner says he just enjoys the cars, the collecting process, and the friends he's made in a hobby that started 43 years ago. When the die was cast, he became a Mattel head, tipping the scale models with an unmatched boxed collection that stays on orange track by keeping it wheel 1 64th at a time with the tires turning and the spectra flames burning. I'm Carl Azus, hot wheeling and dealing puns to get you rolling back tomorrow for the world from A to Z. Thanks as always for watching. You mean the world to me.